We're looking at some polynomials. Okay, it's the same deal as it is with derivatives, guys. You're just going to apply your rules to each individual piece. Now, this very first one looks really, really weird. Um, chances of you running into it, I don't really think are very high, but you never know. Okay, all there is is an integrand and the variable of integration. Okay, it's the integral of dx. So, uh, what you've got to recognize here is that when there's nothing there, it's understood to be a 1. Okay, it's understood to be a 1. So, we are taking the antiderivative of 1 with respect to x. So, that would give us x plus c because the derivative of x would give us 1. The derivative of the constant integration is 0. All right, so that's just one of those weird things I wanted to throw at you um, so that if you ever see it, it, it doesn't totally freak you out. All right, example B, the uh, antiderivative of x plus 2 with respect to x. Uh, now, again, this is not something that you necessarily have to continue doing after this point, but I just want to show you um, that the rules work the same as derivatives. You just split it up into two pieces. You take the antiderivative of both pieces um, because of the sum. So the antiderivative of x would be add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent, so that would be x squared over 2, plus the antiderivative of 2 is 2x, and you only need one constant of integration. Okay, You don't need to put a plus c after the x squared plus 2 and after the 2x. You just need one at the end. Okay, And then the antiderivative of 3x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus x, again, just to emphasize um, pull that 3 out front, pull the 5 out front, and then just look at each individual piece. <clears throat> Add 1 to the exponent, so that becomes x to the 5th, divide by the new exponent. Add 1 to the exponent, so that becomes x cubed, divide by the 3 and then add 1, so that's x squared over 2 plus c. And again, you can always take the derivative to check. It's a really easy check. Use the derivative, so you bring down the exponent, the 5c, and so you subtract from the x, the x over 3, the 3's cancel, 5x squared. Bring down the 2, the 2's cancel, that's the x, the derivative of the Okay? So again, this purple stuff, it really don't have to take the time to write that out every single time. I just wanted to break it up um, in the beginning here so that you see what's happening. Um, but you can just look at it and, and take the antiderivative of each individual piece in the future. Okay? All right. <clears throat> now, sometimes we need to rewrite some of these expressions before we integrate. Because we do not have a product rule, we do not have a quotient rule for anti-differentiation. So if we're faced with something like x plus 1 over the square root of x, we don't just take the antiderivative of the top and the antiderivative of the bottom, just like we don't take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. We have a quotient rule. We don't have a quotient rule here, so we're going to have to use some properties, uh, algebraic properties to rewrite this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is, if possible, and it is possible in this case, I'm going to uh, write this so it's not a quotient. So the square root of x, I'm going to move that to the numerator using my properties of exponents. So the square root is the one-half power. If I move it to the numerator, uh, that makes it a negative one-half. Now, we don't have a product rule either, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to distribute the x to the negative one-half. So when we do that, we add exponents. So negative one-half plus one is positive one-half. And then x to the negative one-half times one is x to the negative one-half. Now we can take the antiderivative of <clears throat> each piece because now we just have a sum of two terms. So we add one to our exponent. So that becomes x to the three-halves. We divide by the new exponent, so we're dividing by 3 halves, plus when we add 1 to negative 1 half, we get positive 1 half. And don't forget your constant of integration. 
And the only thing that we, well, there are a couple of things we can do after this point. The thing that we have to do is we need to uh, get those fractions out of the denominator so they flip over. Okay, and you may see this in factored form. Okay, both of these have a GCF of 2, and we can also take out a 1 half power. So you may see it written like this. They may factor out the 2x to the 1 half, and when we do that, we're left with 1 third um, x to the first plus 1. And then that plus C is just going to be stuck there on the end. Okay. Um, so you may see it in factored form. I'm fine with you leaving it right here, but I just wanted to point that out in case the answer choices are in factored form. <clears throat> All right. Or if we're faced with something like this, the antiderivative of the sine of x over cosine squared of x dx. So again, we don't have a quotient rule. So what we need to do with this is I would start by breaking this up as the sine of x over cosine of x times 1 over the cosine of x. Okay, all I did was break up that cosine squared in the denominator. So I've got a cosine times a cosine. Now, how can we rewrite the sine of x over cosine of x? What is that equal to? Tangent. And what is 1 over cosine equal to? Secant. Now, is secant of x, tangent of x, the derivative of something? Mm -hmm. What's the derivative of? Secant. It's the derivative of secant of x. And that is the derivative of the secant of x. <clears throat> so, you may want to pull those flashcards back out that you created when we first started doing derivatives, and you just flip them over kind of the other way, okay? Um, so it's now you're looking at the answer, and you're looking for what you started with. That's kind of how you can test um, antiderivatives. Just go backwards um, to remind yourself, especially some of these trig rules, because um, those can be a little tricky to, to remember going backwards and forwards. Okay, the power rule is pretty, under, uh, pretty simple to remember. You just add instead of subtract, um, but the trig ones, you may need a little pressure on that. <clears throat>